sites are at uh, uh, somewhat low. Well, at dawn also at, at almost 14, and then they fall down to about five or less on the other sites. Uh, so what we looked at doing, one of the things was trying to come up with some um, consistent hours so that all the sites are open essentially at the same time. Um, and looking at trying to have all of the sites open at least one of the days on the weekends. Um, we were tasked with looking at trying to uh, come up with a savings of $95,000 and uh, the figure that we get using the, the number of hours that we'll be cutting back is 94,315 uh, based on what we're looking at. So what I'd like to do is, is have you look at this proposed schedule and um, see if, if there are any other modifications or tweaks that you feel need to be made to it, but with the understanding that this is a, a starting position that does uh, reach the goal of, of uh, the $95,000 savings that was kind of tasked to us uh, a couple of meetings back. Okay. All right, well, we certainly appreciate you working on this and trying to uh, get so it's a little more uh, user friendly for us. On for the Don site, for example, uh, one night during the week, do we maybe do an evening shift um, so the folks in the area will at least have one evening they can go during the week to try to? Is that, that something? Yes, that, that was one of the issues that uh, I know when uh, Mr. Ramsey and I were talking about this. Uh, we thought it would be a nice idea to start out with, with consistent standard hours, but then we also understood that uh, there are some sites that maybe would be a little more conducive to having some early morning hours a couple of times a week. Other sites might be more conducive to having you know, later hours a couple of times a week. And, and we certainly can work with the, with the individual sites to shift those hours, not necessarily every day, but maybe two days a week or so to make them earlier or later to, uh, to really accommodate people who are either dropping off on the way to work or on the way back. Uh, but just starting with this time frame and then seeing how we need to, to shift the individual sites a couple of hours in either direction on like I say, maybe maybe two or three different days a week, and uh, and then maybe the uh, the Sunday one. I think more like it is today, where it's currently uh, yeah. one to five. That could stay the same. Yeah. I know we don't have blue laws anymore, Mr. Borshak, but that was kind of the purpose when we originally did it. I'm originally from Philadelphia. You'll have yeah. to excuse me. <laughs> but that's that's my we two had cents. Them up there <laughs> and. Uh, you know, certainly. Uh, one to five is, yeah. One yeah. to five is a Sunday time. And and I'm not sure if one to five on Saturday is not a better time either. Well, Saturday we got most of them. Well, you, yeah. we do have uh, the, the animal, animal shelter. shelter. Right. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, if I could. Uh, give up a couple more hours. Make a plea. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you could give up a couple more hours. No, I was wanting to make a plea for couple of additional hours at Ladysmith and, and the reason I'm, I'm asking uh, is the fact that that site takes care of 44 almost 45 percent of the total waste stream in the county and still it's going to have the same hours with the exception of, of four hours it has four more hours in the entire week than a station that has 19 percent and another one that has uh, 10 percent uh, another one that has uh, 3% of the total waste stream in the county are getting almost as many hours, with the exception of four hours, than a site in the county that's taking care of 45% of the waste stream. Now, does that, I mean, does that, I don't want to put it in these terms, but does it make sense? To me, it doesn't. Uh, Lady Smith site, is used by people on the western side of the county. Strictly, I mean, people come from uh, over off of 207 over there. There are people that anywhere from 207 west 
are going to use that site. Carmel Church is going to use that site if the people that use the Green Box site. A lot of people have, you know, pickup, and I understand that. Uh, but if you do not have trash pickup in, at your home, you're going to use that site if you're in Ladysmith. Again, everybody, with the exception of the animal, animal shelter, has 8 to 4, Monday through Friday, 8 to 4 on Saturday, and everybody, with the exception of Ladysmith, has 8 to 12 on Sunday, and Ladysmith has 8 to 4. So there's four hours more in Ladysmith, and we have 40, uh, they have 45% of the uh, waste stream. All right, well, we certainly, uh, I mean, I don't think we had to decide tonight, but I think our points need to be well, I, and, what I'm, and I understand yeah. that. I understand we don't have to decide tonight, but I'm, I'm saying I think we need to look at that. Right. And the fact that uh, that needs That's to be considered. Understandable. John, I think everybody sees that. If I may, Mr. Yes, Chairman. sir, Ms. Popovich. John, can we, can we figure out um, where our peak flows are for the different sites? On which there days, you, know. you mean? Yeah, which, which we have days. a matrix on And, and that, that may give us a better matrix as far as where we can where we can cut back hours and where we can. Yeah, we, we have some um, some historical data, you know, that, that we've done with, with, you know, having the guys use clickers on different days. Uh, we can go back and look at that and then see if we need to do any additional studying to see if, if we need to update that. But, uh, yeah, yeah we, we can look at the information we already have on which days. Mr. Chairman, can I ask one more question? Absolutely, Ms. Davis. How many people are you including at the latest Smith site at any given time during the, the 8 to 4? Um, typically, there will be two at, at Lady Smith. Typically, there will be some. Because you have two, two different. Uh, there there will be overlap where, where for most of the part, there will be two people at the Lady Smith site, you know, at the same time. Uh, for most of the time because um, quite honestly there is so much traffic in there that one person no, for the most part cannot handle all the traffic so you do need an additional person there during most of the day I understand okay Ms. Seeley you have any thoughts all right, he's not on the board Mr. Thomas now that I'll repeat it, what is it? I'll let you. I'm gonna let you in here. I'm just gonna go to the board first. No, I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm good. I. I understand. We all have to contribute. You know, if we just looked at the numbers, we could just close all the rest of the sites and have one site open to go along with Lady Smith. But that wouldn't be fair to everybody. So, I understand we're all contributing. Okay. We have a staff. Staff point. Max, if I could just make one recommendation. Absolutely. Absolutely. I get around it all day long, and I agree with Mr. Akers that Lee Smith is always consumed, but if I can make one recommendation, instead of a bunch of different schedules, I know how, where I come from, depending on where folks are going, they may use Sparta, Bowling Green. If I'm going to Carmel Church, I use Devil's Three Jump. And if we have 12 different schedules, it's kind of hard for folks to, to use the satellite sites I think one dedicated schedule for them outlying sites, then people would know, hey, it's Saturday, the dump's only open from noon to four, because sometimes we'll go Port Royal way, and if, if we have to coordinate all them different schedules, it's pretty tough. I right. think people would accept, hey, we're only going to go four hours, as long as it's consistent. Just, as long as they know what it is. Just my thought. All right. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Okay. Uh, any other any other points on that that anybody needs to make? Let me Johnny kind of see how we're moving this thing and see what see if we can take one more uh, shot at it. Back and, uh, with the next iteration. Yep. Right, next generation. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your patience with us. And remember we used to have blue laws. You, you which? Remember we used to have blue laws. We used to. Some still, of us are still, still doing that. Yeah. <laughs> nothing until nothing until after church. Okay. All right, next item number nine, uh, first reading for text amendment 7909, an ordinance to amend the zoning ordinance of Caroline County by amending article X1X amendments section seven, establishment conditions and time zoning map amendments. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Finch. Members of the board. <laughs> um, 
we first discussed this text amendment at the uh, March 23rd meeting. Uh, Mr. Akers asked that we come back with some options for the board to consider specifically as it relates to um, amendments initiated by the Board of Supervisors or supported by the Board of Supervisors. What I have done is prepared three options for the board to consider. Again, we don't have to act on it tonight, but there's three options for the board to consider and, and they're depending on the option chosen, uh, it affects whether you need to have potentially additional public hearings or not. Um, the first option would be to, to put suggested language in the fee schedule. Fee schedule is adopted by the Board of Supervisors, but it is adopted separately from the zoning ordinance. So if you want to consider some language as we clean up the fee schedule, this might be a good place to, to put such language, um, but it's separate from the zoning ordinance, and because it's a, a separate part of the code, would require a, a separate hearing by the Board of Supervisors. Fee schedule doesn't go through the Planning Commission, so it's not a zoning ordinance amendment that would have to go back through the PC, uh, but it would require this body to hold a separate public hearing on another, uh, another ordinance. Option two would add language, uh, basically add a paragraph F uh, to section 7.1, which was the original ordinance that the board considered. We just add one more paragraph to what the board is already considering. Um, one difference between option one and option two, option two is specifically related to proffer amendments. Option one, sometimes the board of supervisors may rezone property on its own motion or when you're discussing uh, zoning amendments um, there may be changes that are supported by the board I think as Mr. Akers was alluding to it's not necessarily a fee change but you may be changing a condition um, related to proffers that the board actually wants that change to be made this would expand the authority a little bit for the Board of Supervisors to consider not requiring a fee in that situation. Let me throw out an example of where this might work. Up in Ladysmith, we have the direct road improvements um, that will be made as part of Ladysmith Village. They don't own all of the right-of-way there are other property owners who have indicated a willingness to dedicate the right of way as part of a boundary line adjustment and or a, a zoning change. This might give the board some flexibility as, a, as an incentive to um, encourage those land swaps to occur in this instance, give you some flexibility in terms of of the, the assessing the fees because it would be supported with by the Board of Supervisors. So it, it gives you, it's a little more open than limiting it just to a proffer amendment, but it's some flexibility I think that the Board might want to consider. The last suggestion would be to amend Article 19, Section 3 of the Zoning Ordinance by adding language specifically to the end of that section. Again, this section has not been subject to the public hearings and, and consideration by the, the Planning Commission uh, as part of this original application. So if, if we change this language, this entire proposal would have to go back through the process with the Planning Commission and the Board of Supervisors. So anyway, in looking at it, you know, it, it's a little complicated because of the three options, but I wanted to give the Board as many options as you wanted to consider as part of your deliberations on the original text amendment.
Okay. Yes, sir. If you want to, if you want to keep it simple, option number two is is the option to go forward with. But if you want to look at a, at, at uh, you know a little bigger picture, give you some more flexibility, then I think option one would be something that the board may want to look at. My board members have questions of Mr. Fincham on either one of the options. Ms. Popwitz, Ms. Akers. The, uh, any, none of these options would eliminate the need for a public hearing. That's correct. We, you still have a, well, option two, I think, and, and I would need to talk to Mr. Emerson, we may be able to, to look at that as a clarification and, and, and not have to go back to another hearing, but I would want to. I don't know that I want to do away with the public hearing. I think we need to go through the public hearing process. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I was confused. You're right. Nothing here eliminates the public hearing requirement. Okay. In terms of procedure for this amendment oh. and what, what you asked me to do, option two may not require us going back to a separate hearing. Okay. But, but it doesn't, I'm just sorry, I just confused. Okay. We haven't gone to public hearing on this yet. We're still no, no, first reading. No, I understand. And I'm not talking about on this amendment. I'm talking about the process that, that brought us to this point. That's correct. We talked in terms of there may be changes that the board felt was beneficial to the county if an amendment was made on a particular profit. That's correct. Right now, they would have to go back and pay the fee. That's correct. To amend that proper, even though the board suggested the proper amendment. That's correct. And it would benefit the county in the law, in, in the uh, in the process. Yes, but you are correct. There's nothing in anything that's been proposed that would eliminate the need for a public hearing. On that, each individual change. That's correct. Okay. That they would that's, still have to do that. All right. That's what I was asking. Okay. I apologize no, no, for no, confusing. No, 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 no. Okay. I'd just like to leave this at a first reading. And I'll, Mike, I'll come and see you and, and talk about this. Cause That's fine. We don't have to act on tonight. I, I just wanted to give you the options that, that we had, had come up with, um, and, and we can continue this to uh, first reading to uh, the next meeting, if you so desire. Okay. There's no... Uh dire emergency to run this through all no, the sir. night, is it? No, sir. All right. Can do first reading again? Yeah, I think we can have the second reading on it, and uh, we don't have to have a public hearing on the second reading. We can, you can, get, public right, we'll just we can have a second reading if there's any All right, we've had a public hearing. Yeah. I think, you know. If you go to second reading, it's public hearing. So I thought public hearing was after the second. No, no, Continue the second reading is your public hearing. So we yeah, a second, I think first, a second first reading. Yeah. It's a second first reading is what you're asking. Yeah. Second reading is always a public hearing okay. state. But it didn't have to be. We're just going. We're just going to bring it back again. Continue it. Yeah. Under first reading. Yeah, we're going to okay. continue discussing this at the next meeting okay. because you you really ought to have one of the options in mind for the public hearing. Right. Yeah. I agree. Right. Yeah. And I'm not sure we all have one. First in reading. mind right now. First, second reading of new third. Third. First reading. Okay. About it again. We'll have a, uh, another first reading. Uh, when, it, when we get worked out with staff. Okay. Let's move ahead to uh, the next issue on new business. The uh, adoption of the uh, resolution approving the lease financing of governmental facilities and equipment. Courtney Rogers. This is the uh, 2007 B bands that we took out for a number of projects, including uh, some of the fire and rescue pumpers, ambulances, uh, there were some sheriff vehicles. Those are kind of the bigger issues. You might recall that Sparta Fire Station was in this. Uh, the what? The Sparta Fire Station was okay. in this, but that money was returned. Right. So um, that is no longer uh, owed. 
Um, so this is the remaining balance. It's uh, 3.559 million is the remaining balance. So uh, that plus the interest and the cost of issuance essentially pays this off. Um, the resolution as it's written is, um, there shouldn't be any changes to it. Uh, the one thing that I will point out is that uh, this will be paid out over seven years because all of these projects have short lives to them. So VRA is requiring us to pay them off over a shorter period of time. Uh, but that's typical for fire trucks and, uh, and uh, vehicles and things like that. So um, happy to answer any other questions. But again, this is not anything new. This is existing debt that's uh, always been counted. <coughs> and and uh, also was coming due in August. So this is something that uh, we had planned on taking out long term. Okay. okay. All right, and again, this is basically just uh, same debt we already have. It's just re refinancing, re rebundling that debt. And uh, we do need to adopt the resolution that is attached. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion made and probably seconded. We adopt the resolution. Uh, for the Board of Supervisors for the uh, Caroline County approving the lease financing their governmental facilities and equipment. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed say. Motion carries. All right, next item, uh, County Administrator's Report. We all have that in our board packet. And I uh, do uh, want to thank uh, Mr. Thomas for going to the uh, representing us in Carolina Little League. Appreciate that, Mr. Thomas, for the opening day ceremonies. And uh, any closing board comments, uh, Mr. Popowitz? Have none, Mr. Roselle. Uh, Mr. Eggers? Closing board comments. No. Mr. Seeley? No, sir. Uh, Mr. Vice Chairman? Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have none. Mr. Ashcraft, do you have any parting comments? Move to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Motion made and probably second for adjournment. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All right. We'll now adjourn. <laughs>